All right, guys, this video is going to be highlighting a very, very rare, rare motherboard called the X870E Apex from Asus. Now, this motherboard is a unicorn. I think people would sell their soul for this, just like I have. So this PC is for the one and only Mo Shalizi, guys. He's Marshmallow's manager. He's got a crazy car collection. Follow him on Instagram. He's a legend, and I'm very proud to be his go-to PC supplier. And we got him the Ryzen 9 9950X3D processor. We also put a contact frame in there as well as Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Extreme so we can get the best temperatures for his processor. And then we got the Trix Panorama OLED liquid cooler. Now this motherboard also has a built-in RAM cooler. The Apex boards have had RAM coolers for quite some time. Speaking of RAM, we went with G-Skill 48 gigs, 8200 megahertz a second. We actually originally went with 8400 megahertz, but it was not stable. My team tested it and it was blue screening. But for now, we got 8200 megahertz stable on the 9950X3D, which has never before been done until this motherboard came out. We also got a two terabyte NVMe SSD Gen 5. It's from Crucial and it's at 14,000 megabytes a second, which is the best you can get. Then we have the graphics card. This is the Asus Astral RTX 5090. So we're in the BIOS. I've been testing this nonstop. Um, you know, like I said, we got 8200 megahertz. I have the CPU all core ratio only at 52. Um, I also closed the glass panels so it's more realistic. I'm gonna go up to 53. My load line is at level six, which is pretty aggressive. And then my voltage is really low. So I'm gonna try 1.2 and I think I'll feel pretty good about that. So we're at 103 degrees in the power test, but according to my team and my optimizer, this is okay. This is pulling 300 watts in the power test, which probably won't be the case when you're playing Call of Duty. Um, but this is fully maxed out. And as you can see, it's stable. The PC is also not that loud. I have the glass panels on, so it's very realistic. And we are seven, almost eight minutes into the test and it's stable. So the settings I used was 1.275 volts, low line at six and 5.3 gigahertz. So I'm very confident this is the fastest PC we've ever built, thanks to the RAM, the motherboard, the CPU, and the Astro 5090. And in terms of the graphics card overclock, we are at plus 200 megahertz and plus 1500 memory clock. It's time to run Call of Duty now, run the benchmark, run Warzone, run multiplayer, and document the performance that we're getting at 1440p resolution. So stay tuned. All right, so this is where we're gonna call it. I've probably ran like 10 tests. I haven't even played the game yet. Um, the best score I got was 362 average. But right now we're at 360 average. Our average on the CPU is over 400 FPS, which is really good. That's what I've seen other like optimizers on Twitter post. And then we're getting about 367 on the graphics card. We're on the latest GPU driver. We're at 1440p. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with this score. You know, I think we really need to just hop into the game and see what we're getting there. But let us know what you think. I'm really happy with this performance. Um, I also have some RAM here. This is 64 gigs, CL26, 6,000 megahertz. Um, I just wanna see if this is any better or worse than the 8,200 megahertz. So now we are in war zone. Again, we're at 1440p. The benchmark was saying 360 FPS average. And here we are, we're getting about 320, 300 to 320 FPS in Verdansk. So it's really, really powerful. I think that's really good. I don't know of anybody getting scores like this. I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, you know, this 8200 megahertz RAM is no joke. So yeah, let us know what you think of this FPS, you know, 320 in Verdansk. I also wanna show you guys multiplayer. So let's jump into multiplayer in a bit. Multiplayer was like 450, so let's let's tune into that and show you guys that. All right, so I told y'all, I told y'all on multiplayer, this was gonna go insane. We're getting an average of 450, I just hit 500. 
I just hit 500 FPS when I went inside, but we're getting an average of 450 FPS. Again, this is the most I've ever seen, but if you think this is, you know, for whatever reason, underwhelming, then I'll keep pushing. I'll keep trying to overclock this, but I'm very happy with the overclock. Again, 450 average. This is so smooth. Um, you know, when we go outdoors, we are dropping to like 300 a little bit, but still like, it's just so good. It's so, so good. This customer is going to be so happy with it. And honestly, just love it. All right, so we just wanna show you exactly what we did in the BIOS. So on AI Overclock Tuner, you wanna select DOCP1. It might be called XMP1 or Expo1. Now you obviously need to make sure it's stable because um, it's not gonna make it stable for you. You have to make sure if your motherboard's compatible, which we learned it is. So we got 8200. Then this is gonna auto populate with the 8200. Over here, it says CPU core ratio. We have it set to 53, which is pretty nuts for a 16 core processor. Don't let people tell you differently. You know, obviously the 9800X3D could do like 54 rather easily. Um, and the Intels can do six gigahertz, some of the Intels, but 53 for a 16 core Ryzen is nuts. Then Digi plus VRM, we set the low line to six. So the low line basically, you know, bumps up your voltage uh, to avoid crashing. So we, we set the manual voltage to 1.275 um, and the low line six will basically bump it up if it needs more, but it shouldn't need any more. Now with these settings, we're kind of hitting like over hundred degrees on the power test. That's pulling about 300 Watts. So, you know, we might tune it down a little bit, but we're going to keep it like this for now and try to tweak the Corsair IQ settings um, and to get a better fan curve. So in case I do want to tune it down a little bit, I might go a little down on the voltage to 1.25 or 1.2, and then I might bring it down to 52. And that would probably allow us to never reach 100 degrees Celsius. With these Ryzen's, they can clearly go past 100 degrees without crashing, unlike other processors like Intel. All right, guys, so it's the following day. I thought the video was over, but I did want to actually test that new RAM. So we had 48 gigs 8200 megahertz ram stable on this build and i was very happy with the performance but we did have a spare kit of 64 gigs 6000 megahertz cl26 and that's an amd expo kit which meant for amd builds then i thought since 8200 was never stable on any other four dim board and it's stable on the two dim board i figured it would be faster i figured it'd be the fastest kit but now we have a kit that has more ram it has 64 gigs it's only 6,000 megahertz, but we're getting similar, if not better scores. So I think it's a no brainer to give Shalizi this 64 gig kick. So he gets more RAM and more performance. You know, we're getting like 410 average on the CPU. I didn't hit that once with these RAM kits right here. So I ran this benchmark like four times and getting very consistent scores. So yeah, I think we're gonna stick with the 64 gig, 6,000 megahertz. And I have some homework to do after this. I think we're gonna pull a lot of these 8,000 megahertz kits from these AMD builds and go all in on these 64 gig, 6,000 megahertz kits. So let's know what you guys think. We really wanna be the best option for all these kind of compatibility scenarios. So we definitely are gonna stick with the Expo kits for AMD builds and then maybe Intel kits for Intel builds. You know, I have no doubt that this RAM would do great in like a Z890 Apex build, but I think it is best even on the Apex to stick with a 6,000 megahertz kit. But all right guys, without further ado, that's gonna be it for us here. Paradox Customs, we built this insane PC for Mo Shalizi, check him out. He's a great guy, great client of ours for many, many years. Um, his PC is one of a kind. It's the first that we've built with the Apex motherboard and 8200 megahertz. He currently has a 4090 rig, so it's gonna be a huge upgrade for him. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Leave a comment, like, and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube, and we'll see you guys later.